participants. Uh, this is the National Council uh, for Preservation Education's webinar, the introduction to the National Historic Preservation Program. Uh, I am Julie Johnson, the co-director of the National Council's internship program. I want to welcome all the NICP interns to today's event, as well as all the other interns and fellows joining us from federal agencies, the state agencies, and all the other organizations. So pleased that you're here. For those of you unfamiliar with the National Council or NICP, uh, we are a private nonprofit uh, national organization whose members are programs at colleges, universities, and training centers that offer degrees or certificates in historic preservation, heritage conservation, and cultural resource management. Our interns are becoming familiar with NICPE's internship program, which was established in 1992 in cooperation with the National Park Service. On today's webinar is Paloma Belasny, the Youth Programs Coordinator of the National Park Service's Cultural Resources Office of Interpretation and Education in Washington, DC and we'll hear from her shortly. Uh, in the 28 years of our internship program's existence, over 5,000 students and recent graduates have successfully completed internships. And in fact, we might be approaching 6,000 alumni now. I think I've lost track. We have alumni in federal service, state government, nonprofit organizations, and in business all over the country and abroad. It is a great network, and the partnership with the Park Service means that interns work alongside some of the most dedicated and knowledgeable professionals in the fields of historic preservation, collection management, archaeology, conservation, landscape architecture and architecture, history, and all many other related fields. And today, NICB interns are taking part in a first for this program, the first time we've offered our summer orientation virtually. It means that more of you can participate rather than just the DC-based interns uh, that we've held in the past. I'm only sorry it's under these unfortunate circumstances. In addition to NICP's internship program, students might be familiar with PreserveNet, the website sponsored by NICP where our internships are posted twice a year in the summer, in the winter, spring. And uh, it also has a jobs board and links to hundreds of online resources relevant to the field of historic preservation. The website is currently undergoing a major upgrade and will migrate to a standalone site this fall. It has been hosted by Cornell University uh, up until this point, but the new website will be preservenet.org. More details to come at preservenet.cornell.edu later this summer. And if you visit nicp.us, you'll see the other programs offered by the organization. For example, the master list of all degree programs in historic preservation offered in, in the US and that meet NICP's uh, academic standards. Uh, the Journal of Preservation Education and Research per which is a scholarly journal of the field that invites articles from students and emerging professionals and details about NICP's annual conference, which will be virtual for the first time this year and held in late October. Again, that website is ncpe.us. As I said earlier, uh, I am the co-director of NICP's internship program. Uh, I'm joined today by Michael Tomlin, uh, the director of the program and professor and director of the graduate program in historic preservation planning at Cornell University. Uh, he's been with Cornell since 1979. Uh, he is the past board chair of the National Council and in 2009 was the winner of the James Marston Fitch Award given by NICP for Outstanding Achievement in Preservation Education. Michael is our institutional memory here at uh, the organization, can answer any question about it uh, or the field in general. 
he'll be helping me monitor the Q&A. Before I turn the program over to Paloma, I invite all participants to ask questions in the Q&A uh, section of Zoom. Uh, there will be time after each speaker to uh, ask questions, get them answered, uh, as well as at the end of the webinar. And I'm still learning how to navigate uh, the Q&A and the chat and all these Zoom options. So please bear with me if I'm a, bit, a little bit slow uh, and I don't get to your question or see your comment. Uh, I will provide contact information for myself and all our speakers at the end of the webinar. So if you miss asking your question today, you'll get a chance to email us later on. Uh, Paloma Belasny uh, is the Youth Programs Coordinator. She is the point person for the nonprofit organizations that partner with the National Park Service to provide internship experiences in the parks. Not only the Nas uh, National Council, NICP, uh, but for example, uh, the American Conservation Experience, ACE, and their Cultural Resource Internship Program. Uh, I want to thank her today for arranging our speakers uh, and being so open and encouraging uh, about taking our orientation session online into the virtual world. Uh, Paloma is also a NICP intern alumna and a stellar example of our interns going on to a career with the National Park Service. So I wanna turn things over to Paloma. Um, hi, well, hi, thank you. Thank you, Julie, for that really lovely introduction. Um, hi, everyone, my name is Paloma. I'm sorry you can't see everyone, see me today, I'm, I'm waiting low. And I am the Youth Program Coordinator for the National Park Service's Cultural Resources Directorate, and I work with Julie to administer NICP, um, and as she mentioned, other intern programs. I want to thank Julie for setting up and orchestrating this webinar, and um, we are very glad to offer it via webinar because it means more, more interns, more fellows, um, more folks can, can view it. Um, and as Julie also mentioned, the webinar is open to all interns, all fellows, all new employees, um, all are welcome. If you would like a schedule that I've put together of some other uh, webinars for interns um, or other webinars that might be of interest to interns, uh, do get in touch with me and I would be happy to share the link with you. This is not an exhaustive list of all webinars possible in the Park Service for interns, but just some I put together that might be of interest for our cultural resources interns. Um, a big thank you to our presenters today for taking the time um, to talk about your programs and answer some questions. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll turn it over to Julie and or Jim. All right. Um, I want to provide a little bit of uh, uh, introduction for Jim. Um, and just to say, Paloma, I really appreciate all you've done for the program uh, and our interns. Uh, a brief bio of, of Jim Gabbert, who is uh, uh, with the National Register of Historic Places. He is wearing two hats today, so you're going to get a uh, uh, double duty of Jim. He's going to lead the Introduction to Historic Preservation session. And then he's going to tell us about the National Register of Historic Places, and he'll answer questions after each session. Uh, just a brief biographical uh, about Jim. He's been working in historic preservation for 25 years, uh, the last 12 as a historian with the National Register of Historic Places program at the Park Service. His other work experience after completing a master's program in preservation at Eastern Michigan U. Include a, included a stint with the Indiana Landmarks, the statewide nonprofit, and nearly nine years at the Oklahoma State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, so, Jim, you are going to take over and tell us all about historic preservation. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to apologize if I cough during the middle of this uh, today. For some reason, I've decided that the weather doesn't like my throat. <clears> throat> So, um, I'm assuming you can see my screen here, uh, historic preservation, the federal role. Yes. The basic question is, 
uh, preservation of what and for whom, and I'm not going to answer all of those questions. What I am going to do is talk about the many programs and agencies that have preservation as part of or even a focus of their missions. Places like the National Archives and Records Administration and the Library of Congress have distinct preservation related missions, but not necessarily what we think of historic preservation in the common sense. The Smithsonian preserves tangible objects and intangible heritage. There are those among you whose current studies, your internships, and even your future careers are in the area of records management, preservation, or museum management. But most of you are here for the more broad spectrum of cultural resources preservation, and most of you will likely find work in the private sector. I'm here to introduce to you the broad federal responsibilities in this area so you can understand how federal programs might intersect with your future career. Oops. So of course, uh, everyone's seen memes like this. Uh, the last photo is actually of me in my office. Um, but we're here to, today to discuss the role that people like you and I play in the broad umbrella of preservation. With the passage of the National Historic Preservation Act in 1966, historic preservation became an official policy of the federal government. All federal agencies have a level of responsibility to promote preservation in one way or another. And the law put an emphasis on including public in decision-making process. But before the NHPA, there were other laws that laid the foundation of the federal preservation programs. So we're gonna take a look at how this all, this National Historic Preservation Program legally came into being. The Antiquities Act was signed into law by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1906. The law grew out of decades of concern in the late 19th century for the preservation of archeological sites. There was concern about theft and destruction of archeological sites and the Antiquities Act was a way to protect these sites at the federal level. The Antiquities Act authorized the president to designate national monuments on federal land. The act set precedents because it asserted that protecting historic sites was in the public interest and the act still stands as the basis for preservation public policy as it developed through the rest of the 20th century. The Historic Sites Act of 1935 declared it a national policy to preserve for public use historic sites, building, buildings and objects of national significance. The act also set forth the parameters for the Historic American Building Survey, which is still around today. The act also established what is now known as the National Historic Landmarks Program and authorized the federal government to carry out preservation work, including maintaining museums, and did this through the National Park Service. So this act designated the Park Service to carry out the National Preservation Program. The 1966 National Historic Preservation Act, which is so significant that it, that it gets its own slide later, um, expanded the roles and responsibilities of the federal government beyond just federal properties. So in 1906, the Antiquities Act established the policy of federal agency responsibility for historic places on federal land. The 1935 Historic Sites Act identified the Park Service to carry out the preservation programs. And the 1966 NHPA specified review of federal actions affecting historic properties. The 1935 Act directed the Secretary of the Interior through the National Park Service to undertake various programs, including the Historic American Building Survey and the National Survey of Historic Landmarks. This delegation placed the National Park Service at the forefront of federal preservation policy and set the stage for greatly expanded responsibilities that were to come in 1966. But before we get to the National Historic Preservation Act, um, how did we get to it in 1966? Those of you who have come from historic preservation programs, you should be familiar with the genesis of the historic preservation movement. So we're gonna skip the Mount Vernon Ladies Association and the other antecedents and focus on a specific period of time that served as the foundation of the modern preservation movement. 
Needless to say, as evidenced by the 1906 and 1935 acts, preservation of important places has been part of the national dialogue for a while, but the coalescence of the preservation movement really began immediately after World War II. The organization and congressional charter of the National Trust for Historic Preservation occurs in 1949. The creation of this nationwide nonprofit organization which had the support of the federal government helped spur local preservation programs. It was efforts of many, many individuals and, organiz and organizations like the trust that led to the passage of the centerpiece of the modern federal preservation program. The National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 was signed into law October 15th, 1966. It has since been amended and supplemented, but it remains the basis for the majority of federal preservation policies and practices. It came into being in the midst of a push to expand the government's roles and responsibilities in environmental issues in general. So also on October 15, 1966, the Department of Transportation Act was passed. Its section, or its section 4F, is one of the many reasons some of you will find jobs in the future. Also, in 1969, the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, was signed into law. The NHPA was the vehicle for a preservation incentive program, the, the Tax Act, uh, to encourage preservation in the private sector. It came into being in 1976 and later was amended in 1980. There have been tweaks to it ever since, but it is one of the strongest um, motivators for the economic use of historic preservation. So 1966, the National Historic Preservation Act is signed and it, it's, its opening is the Congress finds and declares that the spirit and direction of the nation are founded upon and reflected in its historic heritage. The historical and cultural foundations of the nation should be preserved as a living part of our community life and development in order to give a sense of orientation to the American people. I do suggest that you look up the National Historic Preservation Act and read that preamble just for inspiration in your future jobs. In essence, what the NHPA did was it created a policy program for federal agencies wherein roles and responsibilities are defined. The law serves as the basis for many of the National Park Service programs that you will learn about in this and future webinars. And the act directs federal agencies to integrate preservation into their policies and programs when feasible. The primary sections of the act that, that direct federal agency actions, um, section 106, section 110, uh, they apply to the actions of federal agencies and to the management of federal policies. So as part of federal agency missions, you have agencies that uh, have control, uh, and jurisdiction over federal lands, nearly a third of the land area of the United States is under control of one of these agencies, Department of Defense, NASA, uh, Bureau of Land Management, the Forest Service, the Park Service, the Veterans Administration, and the General Services Administration. But you also have uh, agencies that are grant giving, that, that give money to other agencies, statewide agencies, and even nonprofits, cities, local communities that might have the ability to impact historic properties. So HUD, uh, Housing and Urban Development, uh, Federal Highway Administration, uh, Department of Agriculture, the Park Service, and even the National Endowment for the Arts as granting federal funds. And then there are agencies that give permits that uh, for activities that might impact historic property. So the FCC, for all their cell tower locations, uh, FERC, Federal Energy, um, I can't remember what the R stands for, uh, Commission, uh, Power 
uh, licenses for hydroelectric dams, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, and even Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC, every time a, a bank wants to build a new facility or build a standalone ATN, they need a license for that. So Section 110 of the National Historic Preservation Act directs agencies to create a preservation program for properties that they own or manage to list their historic properties in the National Register of Historic Places and to the extent possible, preserve and use their historic properties to include uh, the potential effects of agency actions on properties that are outside of their control. Similarly, Section 106 directs agencies to take into account the effect of any undertaking uh, on a district site building structure or object that is included in or eligible for inclusion in the National Register, whether that property is under the control of the federal agency or not. Also created by the NHPA is an independent federal agency that you will learn more about later. Uh, so I'm not going to go into any detail on, on this. So the National Park Service as the sort of the home base for the federal preservation programs um, through the Secretary of the Interior has been delegated so many of these responsibilities. So in today's webinar, you're going to meet some of these programs and learn about them and you're going to um, learn about the responsibilities that the Park Service has as a leader in the federal preservation program. So for example, the, the National Park Service uh, creates lists, National Register of Historic Places, National Historic Landmarks, the Historic American Building Survey, the Historic American Engineering Record, Historic American Landscape Survey. We are the, the quote, keepers of the Secretary of the Interior standards. And there are standards for lots of things. There are standards uh, for rehabilitation. There are standards for survey. And there are also the Secretary of Interior's professional qualifications in historic preservation. The Park Service produces a lot of great technical guidance, either through uh, research at the National Center for Preservation uh, Technology and Training, NCPTT, or in conjunction with the Tax Act. Uh, technical Preservation Services is the uh, uh, division of the Cultural Resources Program that maintains the, the Secretary of Interior standards, that reviews tax credit projects, that creates um, the uh, uh, various bulletins and guidelines for specific preservation treatments. And then importantly, the Park Service is also the source of funding that includes the Historic Preservation Fund, which goes to the states. And you're going to learn a lot more about that as well. But also tribal uh, preservation programs get money. And we have other programs that Congress creates, like Maritime Heritage Grants, Save America's Treasures Grants, et cetera, that Megan Brown will teach you all about. <coughs> So what we do in the, the, the Cultural Resources Division, in particular the National Register, National Historic Landmarks, Technical Preservation Services, uh, even Megan and, and, and her grants are sort of what we call external programs. We deal mostly with the public. Our partners are the states and tribes and local communities out there. So we help the, the public, very little of what we do is actually internal to the National Park Service. Some other programs that you're going to hear from are more internal to the Park Service itself, but we are uh, the, the, the outward facing and outward working group of folks who work uh, for the Park Service with the public and, and communities. So the next speaker uh, who happens to be me, is going to talk about one of these programs. So I'm going to continue on as I hopefully bring up my next. Yeah, Jim, I don't know if you can hear me. 
Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, oh. We we don't yeah. have any we we don't have any 